Photon Hypernova is going to be our next core booster set here in the TCG. From a competitive standpoint of view, Photon Hypernova is going to have a huge impact on our current competitive metagame. Some of the cards featured here in the video will have a high competitive value, while others are more focused on boosting up existing archetypes a little further to increase their power and consistency. So without further ado, let's start off with I guess the biggest archetype or for me at least the archetype that I'm looking forward to most here next to Kashira and Photon Hypernova. And that's Gishki. The first one is Gishki Grimness. It's a new level 2 monster that gives a huge boost to the Gishki strategy. Upon normal or special summon, he can special summon a Gishki monster from the deck, which of course is going to be Gishki Abyss. And as you know, that's basically the Stratos of the archetype, that's quite conveniently not once per turn. You'll be searching either Gishki Shadow or Gishki Vision, and that will facilitate a potential ritual summon later in the turn or duel. So basically for now in our competitive metagame, that's, you know, something for Sprite. Uh, very similar to, as we know, we had D.Va, you know, some formats ago with Helki Fibrex legal. This, you know, your Grimness is basically a free normal summon plus two level twos on field. Plus, speaking of ritual summon, the Gishki archetype is getting a new ritual monster, which is superb, it's a monster effect negation. So let's take a look. The ritual monster is called Eve Gishki Neramanas. You want to get this new ritual monster out as soon as possible, because upon ritual summon, he can special summon a water monster from your graveyard, which, as mentioned earlier, might be Gishki Abyss for yet another Gishki search. Neramanas also has the capability to negate a monster effect by bouncing back a ritual monster to your hand. You will negate the activation and shuffle the negated monster back into the deck. So again, a fantastic ritual monster for, you know, Gishki and you know, upon further deck building something for Sprite, simply because this is yet another card that kinda could prevent your opponent from using Nibiru on you by simply, you know, getting the ritual monster on board first and then start using your Sprite cards to, you know, establish your Sprite board. No, there's one more Gishki ritual spell to be added here. The last Gishki card featured here is going to be a new ritual spell for the archetype, Gishki Necro Mirror. This ritual spell could work just like any other ritual spell by tributing monsters from either your hand or field for the ritual summon, but you also have the ability to tribute your opponent's monster for the ritual summon, and that's very nifty. So again, this is something for going second, but again, as you know, Gishki they have more ritual spells, so definitely take a look at the other Gishki ritual spells as well. But as a whole, the new Gishki cards are fantastic for sprites. Now next up, a new uh, Albus and new Brandon fusion card, so let's take a look. The first one is a new fusion monster, Grand Guignol the Dusk Dragon, which is very easy to summon with Blazing Cartesia, which again was a new card in Darkwing Blast, and basically any light or dark monster, and believe me, this will definitely be worth it. Upon Fusion Summon, Grand Guignol sends a level 6 or higher light or dark monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard. So you could send, let's say, the Bestial Saronir from, you know, from your deck to the graveyard for another foolish burial-alike effect. Or you could even send one of your extra deck monsters like Albion or Ash Dragon to the graveyard for more pluses during the end phase. Don't overlook Grand Guignol's last effect that it can banish itself from either your field or graveyard to special summon a Despia monster from your extra deck. So definitely looking into the future, you know, Despias are getting more support, so Grand Greek Null added in the extra deck, maybe not now, but definitely in the future. So if you're a Brandon Despia or Bistial Despia or Elvis player, definitely get this card. So the second fusion monster is also fantastic. The card is called Rin Brum the Striking Dragon. You will need the Fallen of Elvis and any Beast Warrior, Beast or Wing Beast for this fusion summon. So I'm pretty much looking at something like Tri-Brigade Mercurier to easily get this card on board. Rinbrum has the capability to negate a fusion, synchro, exceed or link monsters effect and then bounce back one monster on the field back to the hand. So that's basically an excellent disruption card. Plus. During your opponent's turn, when Rindgrum is in your graveyard, you can use its effect to target a Fallen of Elbus in your graveyard to either special summon itself or the Elbus to the field. And as you know, this could be another interruption on your opponent's turn in case you went for Elbus. So again, these two fusions are fantastic. Fantastic support for Brandon Elbus Bestial. And especially again, if you're, you know, a Brandon Bestial or Elbus 
deck player, archetype player, definitely get these cards for now, but in the future because of more support. Next up, it's something for your uh, Labyrinth players. <laughs> and it's actually a fantastic card, so let's take a look. Big Welcome Labyrinth is going to be one of the deck's best traps, especially in conjunction with their field spell for more interruption. Big Welcome Labyrinth special summons a Labyrinth monster from either hand, deck or graveyard and then returns one monster you control back to the hand. Don't overlook its graveyard effect, because that one also has the ability to bounce back a fiend monster on your side of the field back to the hand. Or, if you control a level 8 or higher fiend type, you can target one card from your opponent instead. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is fantastic, because both effects of this card can trigger your lovely Labyrinth of the Silver's Castle. <laughs> That's again so insane, because again, this graveyard, or this, this graveyard effect just works like a normal trap card. And, and you know, as mentioned before, that's just insane, simply because maybe not now, but definitely in the future, if you kind of want to, you know, invest yourself with the combos in Labyrinth, definitely get these cards now, because a big welcome Labyrinth is a fantastic card, fantastic normal trap as well. Next up is a more generic trap, not specific for the Labyrinth deck. Waybridge is a very similar card to Evenly Matched, because it forces your opponent to cut their army down to just one monster. So very similar as we've seen in, you know, the, the past. Uh, sets like Power of the Elements and Darkwing Blast, getting those I call power traps. And Waybridge is definitely one of those. So probably not in the main deck, but it might become somewhat of a side deck semi-staple. Who knows? The next one is for your Plunder players out there. It's a fantastic synchro, so let's take a look. Plunder Patrol Ship Yort will change everything for the Plunder Patrol archetype. It's a level 8 synchro monster that, when you have it face up on the field, lets you add any Plunder Patrol card from your deck to your hand when your opponent special summons a monster. Not only this, if Yort is equipped with a Plunder Patrol card, you can also special summon a Plunder Patrol monster from the deck. And that's insane, because this is just another tool to get out something like Whitebeard as soon as possible. But hold up, that's not all. Its last effect lets you get back any Plunder Patrol card from your graveyard back to your hands, but then it will put itself into one of your pendulum zones. This play is not ideal in some situations because you want to have its on-field monster effect first, but its pendulum effect could help you out with the attribute problem. More specific, you can return it from your pendulum scale back to your extra deck and give your opponent a plunder patrol token with any attribute that you choose. And that's actually huge for the archetype, because as you know, if you're a plunder patrol player or if you played the deck before, it's more of a going second deck because you're kind of you know, somewhat dependent on your opponent's monsters, either on field or in the graveyard because of their attributes. So this new card, you know, could give you the opportunity to go first, give your opponent any plunder patrol token or, or a token with any attribute, and then, you know, you can capitalize on that one attribute, like light or fire or whatever, again, which deck your opponent is playing. But Again, a fantastic card for Plunder Patrol. Let's continue with Dogmatica. Dogmatica Matrix is a continuous spell and insane going second if your opponent controls a monster. On activation, you can either add a Dogmatica Ritual spell or Ritual monster from your deck to your hand. And then if your opponent controls a monster, you can add any Dogmatica card from your deck to the hand as well. Its continuous effect helps you out by destroying your opponent's extra deck for one card each turn if you control a Dogmatica Ritual monster. So just like Maximus, you could also send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. Their new Ritual monster, Dogmatica Alba Zoa, makes your Dogmatica monsters unaffected by your opponent's Fusion, Synchro, Exceed and Link monsters. Plus, during the main phase, you can make your opponent choose to do one of the following effects. Either send one card from their hand or extra deck to the graveyard for every two cards they have in their extra deck, or return all fusion, synchro, exceed and link monsters they control to the extra deck. So these new Dogmatica cards are pretty cool, the continuous spell is fantastic. Uh, as you know, Dogmatica already have a couple of ritual monsters. And of course, some, you know, some quite of it, like, like Ecclesia, the, the Fleur de Leaf, something, and Maximus, they are fantastic support, not per se as, a, you know, the, a fully fo focused Dogmatica deck, but I feel that this new Ritual Monster, and especially this Continuous spell, could definitely find a place in any Dogmatica deck or strategy. 
Now we have four cards left. Let's start off with the first one featuring Visa Starfrost. It's a trap card called Trivi Karma. Upon activation, it lets you negate any monster's effect from your opponent while boosting up a Visa Starfrost in your monster zone. Next, you could also banish Trivi Karma from the graveyard to search any spell or trap that mentions Visa Starfrost from the deck. So for me, the eye catcher is definitely the Terrellman Field spell, Pearl Reno. The next one is something for your bee troopers, insect, or plant players out there. And I'm also looking at trap tricks, which again in the future will get a new structure deck as well. So let's take a look at this new boss monster. Peregrim, Sheld Emperor of the Forest Crown. It's basically a Doomdozer alike high attack monster that you can get on the field by banishing three insect and or plant monsters from the graveyard. When he's phase up, your opponent can't respond with monster effects on your spell and trap activations. Plus, during your main phase, you can also activate its dark hole effect to destroy all non-plant and insect monsters on the field. So that's really cool, right? It's another boss monster which again could facilitate potential big push for something like bee troopers or trap tricks. The next one is a new uh, boss monster, I guess, for something like Generator or Virtual World. It's a new rank 9 exceed. So let's take a look. Laviton, Generator Boss of the Shadows, is basically a generic rank 9 exceed that suppresses attacks and allows you to remove your opponent's monster in a non-targeting and non-destruction way. As a quick effect, by the way. You'll need to spend an extra deck slot to Jormund Gander, Generator Boss of Eternity as well. But I think decks like Generator and Virtual World could definitely try to fit this one in. So I guess a fantastic, I guess generic level 9 or rank 9, uh, you know, extra deck monster for something like Virtual World or Generator. So one card left and it's a cool one. It's also an Exceed. Let's see. Gigantic Champion Sargas. He works in any deck that can summon a rank 4 Exceed monster thanks to Springen's Merrymaker. It's a huge machine monster that can add any Therion or Springen's card to your hand. That's pretty cool. So you could grab something like Therion this Colosseum, which in turn can add whichever Therion monster you need. So I guess it's pretty much okay support for something like, you know, basically any Springen's deck or Therion deck, maybe EBC if you, you know, play the Therion package. So for me, that's it. Huge shout out to Konami for, you know, sending these over for early reveal. And guys, definitely don't forget, upcoming Friday, box openings, and hopefully, you know, we can pull those, uh, you know, new cards. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment or like if you enjoyed the video. Thank you, signing out. Peace.